Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. Uh, so uh, for today, we are going to learn a new chapter. So before that, uh, I want to let you know that uh, your midterm uh, marks has already been released. So you can check in uh, ecom, okay? And if you have any question regarding your midterm, you can ask me directly. Okay, so for today, we are going to learn a new topic. Uh, we are going to uh, learn chapter four. So chapter four is about root lockers. Okay, so, so far you have learned about uh, determining the stability of a system uh, using poles. So you can use poles uh, and plot the poles on the S plane. And from, from the plot, you can determine uh, if the poles are on the right hand side of S plane, then the system will be unstable. If the poles are on the left hand side of S plane, then the system is stable. And lastly, if the poles are located on the uh, JW axis, then the system is marginally stable. And you also learn how to use uh, Rob Hurwitz criteria to determine the stability of a system. And you only need to take the denominator of transfer function, arrange them in a Rob Hurwitz table, and look at the first column. If there is a sign change, then the system will be unstable. So uh, the reason why we use Rob Hurwitz criteria is because we don't want to factorize the denominator. Maybe because the denominator has uh, a very high order of uh, polynomials. <clears throat> so it's it will be difficult to factorize. But sometimes uh, uh, we, we have to factorize because uh, when we factorize, we, we will know a lot, a lot more things, okay? A lot of things that uh, regarding the system. So today we will uh, learn about root locus. So root locus is another way of determining the stability of a system by plotting uh, a graph or by sketching a graph called root locus. So for today, students will be able to um, aware of the control system problems. So the problem that lead us to uh, using root lockers. Secondly, aware of the vector representation of a complex number. So uh, we have learned about complex number um, and how to represent the complex number as a vector. So you have learned complex number maybe during your first year that complex number has angle, has magnitude. So we will go back uh, and revise on that. And third, we will define the root locus. What is root locus? And lastly, uh, we will determine uh, some properties of root locus. Okay, so um, root locus is a graphical presentation of the closed loop. Closed loop poles as a system parameters k is varied. And it is a powerful method of analysis and design for stability and transient response. So usually your system will have a gain k. Okay, so this gain k, if you vary the value of k, then the system stability will also uh, vary. And the reason why we use root locus is that we want to determine the stability of a system when we uh, vary this k here. So before we learn about root locus, we need to understand the, the problems in control system and also uh, the vector representation of complex number. So what are they? So I think you have learned number two, but uh, we will revise what uh, revise on that. Okay, so give, uh, let's say you are given a, a general feedback control system. So the forward trans function, KGS, and a feedback trans function, uh, HS. 
Okay, so generally a system, uh, a control system can be made of this one forward trans function and one feedback trans function. So the forward trans function, we also call it uh, open loop trans function, KG, oh no, uh, KG, KGS, HS is also known as uh, open loop trans function. And closed loop, when you simplify the block diagram using feedback uh, formula, uh, you will get the closed loop transfer function. Okay, so this is an example of what happened if you uh, if you have a system here, the forward trans function k over s times s plus two, and a feedback. So a feedback like this without any box here, we call it uh, unity feedback. Unity feedback. Okay, when you have a feedback without any box, so the feedback signal represent a value one. So this kind of uh, control system, we call it a unity feedback system. So when we vary this, the, the K value, if you look at the uh, graph, uh, for example, if you take uh, K equals uh, 0 0.5, then the system will reach steady state, but it will take uh, quite a long of time, quite long time to reach steady state. So when we increase uh, K, let's say K equals 2.0, it reached steady state uh, quite early, but uh, there's an overshoot, okay? Overshoot in the middle. If you look here, there's an overshoot there. So uh, overshoot meaning that the system is stable, but um, it will give some, uh, macam, it will cause a bit of vibration on that, on the system, which is not good, okay? If, uh, if the vibration is prolonged, then the system might, uh, might damage, okay? So when you increase K uh, more, for example, if you use K equals 15, then it will reach a uh, steady state uh, very, very fast, but the overshoot is very high. And also there will be some damping and uh, the damping will take uh, some time before uh, before it gone, okay? So, uh, the, the problem here is that when you increase K, then the system will become stable and also reach a uh, steady state value faster. But the problem is that it will produce of, uh, over, over damping, uh, overshoot, sorry, we, we will produce overshoot and produce damping. So we don't want uh, damping and overshoot to happen. So uh, in control system, basically you want to uh, vary or tune the uh, gain K here. So uh, we will learn on tuning the gain K uh, in the last chapter about PID controller. But uh, here um, in root locus, basically we want to see uh, what happened if you vary the value of K what happened to the system? Is it becoming more uh, stable or become uh, more unstable? Okay, so in this case, it becomes more, more stable. It is stable, but uh, it produces more uh, damping and also overshoot. Okay, so, um, the problems uh, with uh, root lockers, uh, the control system is that uh, when you have a closed loop transfer function, then uh, the denominator here will also depends on K. So if you have, uh, if you look at the open loop uh, transfer function, then the K is on the numerator only. But if you uh, determine the closed loop transfer function, then the denominator has the constant k. So what is the actual problem? So basically, if you have constant k on the closed loop, for example here, 
So if you look at the open loop system, it's easy for you to determine the uh, poles and also zeros. Okay, so the poles are the value of uh, denominator when uh, the value of S when denominator is zero. And if you look at the closed loop system here, if you look at the denominator, then it has a constant k here. So what are the actual poles? Is it 0, minus 2, minus 4? And also negative 1k and negative 3k. So we have to uh, consider the constant k in determining the poles of a closed loop system. So the root locus technique basically help you to find the poles at a specific value of k. Okay, that's the problem of control system. Okay, so uh, we go into learning on how to represent complex number using vector. So let's say if you have a complex number S equals uh, sigma plus j omega. So sigma here is the real part of your complex number and omega is the imaginary part and j is a uh, imaginary number so j basically equals square root minus one okay so in maybe in your mathematics class uh, we use symbol i so another symbol we can use uh, j okay Okay, so if you plot uh, S equals sigma plus J omega on S plane, then sigma will be on the uh, X axis and J omega on the JW axis. And the angle uh, made by the complex number from the X axis or the uh, sigma axis, we call it the uh, direction or theta and the length of the complex number we call it the magnitude or m okay so we have this formula but this formula uh, for example the formula for theta uh, depends on how you look at uh, how you measure the theta okay for example here theta is tangent minus one but let's say if your your complex number is here then theta is measured from uh, x exists to the uh, complex number. So theta here no longer tangent minus one. It will be uh, 180 minus tangent minus one. Okay. So you need to um, uh, you need to use your intuition before uh, determining the theta. Not necessarily tangent minus one. Okay. And then you can combine the complex number uh, or represent the complex number from S equals sigma plus J omega into S equals M angle theta, okay? So this, this triangle here represent angle. Okay, so we can represent S equals M angle theta. So let's say you are given a function of complex number, fs equals s plus a. Then you can replace s equals uh, sigma plus j omega. And fs becomes sigma plus a plus j omega. And another complex number will, uh, will form, okay? If you replace s with sigma plus j omega. Okay, so a trans function f, let's say a trans function f can be represented by the product of s plus zero divided by the product of s plus poles. So we have two concepts. I think uh, I haven't uh, taught you 
what are zeros and poles. So zero is basically a value of S when numerator Okay, when the numerator equals zero and poles are value of s when the denominator equals zero. Okay, so a transformation is made up of uh, numerator divided by denominator. So the, the numerator is made up of the product. So this symbol here is the product so you can factorize uh, the polynomial to become the, the product of uh, zeros, uh, s plus zeros. So transformation equals the product of s plus zeros divided by the product of s plus poles. And you can represent uh, the transformation f in terms of m angle theta. So to find m, basically you need to find the product of the length of the zero divided by the product of the length of the pole. So basically each of the product here, you need to uh, determine uh, uh, the location in, in the S plane. You determine the location in S plane and also determine the magnitude and also the, the angle for each of the S plus Z, okay? And then for the, to, determine, to determine M, you need to determine the length of zero, the product of length of zero divided by the product of the length of poles. And then for the angle, it's equals to the sum of the angle of all zeros minus the angle of all poles. Okay, so these two formula are important. Okay, you need to uh, remember, okay? Uh, we will look uh, more on the application of this uh, in subsequent lectures. Okay. okay, so this is an example of how we can use uh, the transformation Fs. So let's say Fs equals S plus 1 divided by S times S plus 2. And then S equals minus 3 plus J4. So the first step we need to do is you replace S with minus 3 plus j4, you replace and you uh, simplify as much as possible. So here it simplifies until here. And then from here you can determine uh, the m and also theta. Okay, you want to represent f equals m angle theta. So the first step is you need to determine uh, m and theta for the zero or numerator. So I give example for numerator. So numerator is minus two plus j4. So if you plot on the S plane, then it will be somewhere around here. So the angle is measured from uh, x axis and the m is the length. So m equals square root of two squared plus four squared. So you get square root 20. And theta equals 180 minus tangent minus one Uh, tangent 4 over 2, okay? Okay, if you try to use calculator, you'll get uh, the angle is uh, 116.6. Okay, so, so here you get the uh, magnitude for 0 and you can try yourself later to determine uh, five here, which is the ang uh, the magnitude of, I think this one, and also 17, square root 17, maybe this one. 
Okay, so uh, to find M, basically you uh, find the product of magnitude of zero divided by magnitude of poles. Product of magnitude of poles. And then to find the angle, so you determine the sum of the angle of zero minus sum of angle of poles. Okay. I think in uh, quiz 10, question one, uh, it's about this, okay? So you can try later quiz number one, quiz 10 number one. Okay, so we go back to our root lockers. So root lockers is a graphical presentation of closed loop poles as a system parameters is very, so always remember that root lockers is closed loop poles, okay? Not open loop. So let's say if uh, a question uh, tries to trick you, giving you uh, an open loop. So make sure you find closed loop uh, transformation first uh, to determine before determining the root locus. Okay, so root locus is a graph that uh, that you get when you uh, vary the system parameter or the gain. So this method uh, is used to analyze and design control system stability. So thanks to W.R. Evans for making your life miserable. Oh, uh, masa saya degree dulu, saya tak belajar pun root locus. Tapi korang uh, lagi advance. So saya degree dulu dekat UM, tak belajar root locus. So uh, thanks to W.R. Evans, and thanks to uh, siapa yang buat syllabus uh, automatic control. Bukan saya, okay? Okay, so uh, here uh, is an example of how to uh, define or plot the root locus. So let's say you are given a camera that you want to control the position of camera. So in the camera, you have a, an amplifier. So amplifier has gain K1 and also a motor and the camera itself. So let's say the motor and camera has trans function K2 divided by S plus uh, S times S plus 10. So this is a, a block diagram. So before you can plot root locus, you need to determine the closed loop trans function by uh, reducing the block diagram first. So you reduce the block diagram, you get K divided by S squared plus 10S plus K. So K is equals K1 times K2. And then um, let's say we vary the value of K from zero to 50. So let's say K equals zero. So when you substitute K equals zero in, in the trans function, so you get uh, the denominator equals S squared plus 10 S. So if you find the poles, then poles will be, be S equals zero and minus 10. So you get pole number one and pole number two, minus 10 and zero. And you repeat the process. So K equals five, you get uh, poles equals negative 9.4, and negative 0 0.5 and so on. So if you look at uh, the table, when you vary the value of K, then the value of poles also uh, vary. And another thing that you uh, can look at and can observe from the table is that when you increase the value of K, then the value of poles uh, reach a certain value. One value that um, maybe uh, at a, a final value. For example, here, uh, minus five plus J5 and minus five plus minus, uh, minus five J, J5, okay? And when you plot uh, each point here on the S plane, then you get a shape, okay? Much of cross, isn't it? Then you can, uh, you can sambungkan titik-titik tu. Okay, you can uh, connect all the dots. 
Then when you connect all the dots, then it becomes the root locus. So root locus basically is the graph when you vary the value of k and you determine the poles. So you determine poles for each k value and you connect the dots. Okay? And that's the root locus. Okay, so root locus has direction. That's one thing that you need to aware. So here, the root locus uh, start from k equals zero and ends at k equals 50. So the direction is from here. So here you, you will see a small uh, arrow here and it will reach a center here and then goes up and another one goes down, okay? So I think uh, in the next lecture, we will learn more on the properties, how to determine the direction and so on. But here it's uh, the general concept, only the general concept first. So uh, root locus basically represent the path of closed loop poles as the gain is varied. And from the root locus, we can learn uh, about the system stability. For example, from uh, k, if the value of k from 0 to 25, meaning from here to this point here, the center here, then the system is over them. So the system is over them when the root locus is on the uh, x axis or the real axis. And when k equals 25, which is at this point, at the center point here, the system is critically damped. And for k bigger than 25, meaning that k, uh, the root locus is not on the uh, real axis, then the system is under them. So here the system is stable for any value of k because there are no poles on right hand side of the S plane. All of the poles are on the left hand side. So the system will always be stable no matter how much k you give, okay? Okay, so uh, that's the basic about uh, root locus. We will uh, look more into root locus uh, on next class this Wednesday, okay? So uh, for today, we will learn on uh, some properties of root locus and also how to determine whether a point, a given point is on a root locus or not. Okay, so a transfunction TS, uh, the closed loop transfunction TS uh, equals uh, kg divided by one plus kgh. Okay, so, so how do we get, uh, how to determine the poles of this closed loop transfunction? So to determine the poles, you need to use uh, the denominator. Okay, so I said just now, uh, poles denominator equals zero. Okay, so 1 plus kgh equals 0. Rearrange, you get kgh equals minus 1. So the value minus 1 uh, can be in the form of complex number. So if you plot uh, minus 1 in S plane, so it's on this, this point here. And the angle of minus 1 is 180 degree, and the magnitude is 1. Okay, so the poles are the denominator, kgh always equals one angle 180 degree. So the magnitude is one and the angle is 180 degree and 2k plus one here, meaning that it rotates, okay? Uh, if k equals zero, then it's the first uh, 180 degree. If k equals one, then uh, it rotates. Okay, pusingan yang pertama. So k kali kedua, uh, k equals two, then uh, it's the second rotation. Meaning that uh, the angle is always 180 degree, always on the 180 degree position, but the value maybe jadi 360 or uh, 540, okay? So the magnitude condition for the, uh, for kgh, is always equals one. So you get the gain K equals one over magnitude of GH. 
and for the angle the angle K of kgh is always 2k plus 180 degree so here uh, uh, what i want to show is that to determine whether a point is on a root locus or not then first you need to determine whether the angle made by the point is uh, always 180 degree or multiple of 180 degree and then from there you can determine the gain okay so let's look at an example so given a unity feedback system so unity feedback so unity feedback is when h equals one okay so sometimes in your test or in your final or quiz uh, the question only give you uh, the word unity feedback so unity feedback, you need to uh, be aware that it's uh, when H equals one or the feedback has value one, okay? So G equals K times S plus two divided by S squared plus four S plus 13. So the question is, is point minus three plus zero J is on the root locus? And if the point is on the root locus, find value K. So there are five steps. So first, you need to determine the zeros and poles of the forward transfer function. So forward transfer function just now is uh, the k, uh, the g here. And then from there, you determine the angles from zero and poles to the interested point or to the point of interest, meaning that you need to determine the angles from zeros and poles to this point, minus 3 plus 0 j. After that, you determine the length of vector from the zeros and poles to the point minus 3 plus 0 j. Then add all angles, meaning that you sum uh, angle from zeros minus the sum of angle from poles. Okay, so uh, sum um, zeros minus uh, sum of poles. So this is for the angle. If the, when you add, you get uh, the value multiple of 180, then the point is on the root locus. Okay, so number four ni penting. And then to determine the gain K, you need to uh, use the length of zero and poles from the point of interest. Okay, so let's look at how to determine uh, whether this point here is on the root locus and what is the gain value. Okay, so the first step is to determine the zeros and poles of the forward transfer function and then plot them on S plane and also plot the point of interest. Okay, so this is your forward transfer function and the poles are you need to uh, you need to uh, factorize this so you get uh, poles equals um, minus two plus j three uh, minus two plus minus j three okay so that's uh, the poles and then zeros basically it's equals uh, s minus two Okay. Plus. Okay, then you can plot uh, the zeros and poles on the S-plane. So, uh, on the S-plane, the poles is always represented by a uh, cross and zeros is always represented by circle, okay? And here is your point of interest, minus three. And then after that, you determine the angles from zeros and poles to the point of interest. Okay, so let's look at the first uh, pole, the top here. So you need to uh, first draw a line connecting uh, the poles and the point of interest. And then you find the angle made, okay, from poles and the point of interest. So always measure the angle from uh, 
x axis positive okay so theta 1 equals uh, 270 minus tangent 1 over 3 or you can use any other uh, formula based on uh, how you look at the, the the angle okay it can be 360 minus or oh, 180 degree plus okay so yang ni semua bergantung pada uh, macam mana awak visualize okay tak ada formula yang specific and then uh, the second angle theta 2 so here uh, theta 2 the angle made by theta 2 to the point of interest is simple 180 degree tak payah kira and then from theta 3 the angle theta 3 so here the formula use 90 plus tangent minus 1 so you can also use 180 minus okay tangent 3 tangent minus 1 3 so ada dua cara so another cara is 180 minus tangent minus 1 3 okay so ini semua bergantung pada uh, macam mana awak tengok uh, angle tu And then after you determine all the angles, then you, you add all the angles. So the add, I said just now, sum of zeros minus sum of poles. So sum of zeros minus sum of poles. Okay, sum of angles of zeros minus sum of angles of poles. Uh, jangan pula tambah zeros dengan poles. Uh, jangan lebih buruk eh. Angles, okay. Uh, saya tak boleh lah tulis panjang-panjang, pendek je Senang nak, nak ingat, kalau tulis panjang-panjang tak boleh ingat Okay so you add all the angles 180 minus 251.57 plus 108.43 So bila tambah, you get minus 180 degree So here, it's multiple of 180 degree Walaupun ada minus, tapi dia still 180 degree so when you get 180 degree, then you can conclude that the point minus 3 plus 0 J just now is on the root locus. Okay, so bila dah determine point 2 dekat root locus, then we can determine the magnitude at that point. So to determine the magnitude, first you need to determine the length of vectors from 0 and poles to the point of interest. Okay, cari length je. So for example, length, first you need to determine the length of vectors from zero and poles to the point of interest, okay? Cari length dia je. So for example, length L2 here, from minus 2 to minus 3, so length dia 1. The length is 1. And for length L1 here, so you need to uh, use again your, uh, how you look at the, the vector, okay? So here, uh, to determine L1 so basically square root of panjang ni so panjang ni 3 so 3 square plus panjang ni 1 square so you get square root 10 and then L3 so if you look at L3 and L1 the length will be the same okay? sama panjang je sebab jarak dia sama distance dia Okay, so if you know L1, L3 tak payah kira, terus tulis square root 10 pun betul. Okay, so when you get all the lengths, then you need to use the formula to find M first. Okay, so M equals the product of length of zero divided by the product of length of poles. So symbol ni tadi adalah product, okay. Okay, ni sebenarnya uh, simbol pi ada dua, so ni pi kecil, ni pi besar. Okay, uh, simbol pi ni uh, diambil dari tulisan Greek. Okay, so tulisan Greek pun macam A B C juga. Dia ada uh, huruf A besar, A kecil. So pi ni ni pi kecil, ni pi besar. Okay, tiba tiba cerita tulisan Greek tak kaitan. Okay, so jangan confuse lah ni pi besar ni maksudnya product okay product of length of zero divided by product of length of poles okay so use all the length that you calculate so length of zero is one divided by square root 10 times square root 10 so you get one over 10 
So m equals 1 over 10. And then ambil value m ni, guna dekat formula yang uh, derived awal tadi. So k equals 1 over magnitude of g times h equals 1 over m. So k equals 1 over m. So m is 1 over 10. So substitute 1 over 10 here. So you get k equals 10. Okay, so dapatlah k equals 10. Okay, so simbol garisan ni maksud dia magnitude, okay? Okay, bukan determinant. Determinant tu untuk matrix. Untuk uh, something linear, uh, it's uh, magnitude or absolute, okay? Okay, so this is how you determine the value of k, the gain k for the point uh, minus 3 plus 0 j. Ah, habis dah lecture hari ni. So, please try do your uh, quiz number 10. Okay, so quiz number 10, I think basically about uh, about this, okay? I think the same question pun. So, uh, try to do it on your own. Uh, uh, try buat tu maksudnya keluar soalan final lah, okay? Okay, so quiz 10 uh, due date is uh, 8 a.m. Wednesday, okay? Uh, okay, on Wednesday, I will brief to you also regarding uh, project. Okay, brief sekarang. Okay, so your project uh, you have done uh, until part two. So let's look at uh, what else you can do. Hmm, hmm root locus. Apa ni? Tak ada arahan. Okay, tak ada arahan. Uh, nampaknya saya kena buat arahan sendiri. Okay, so uh, part 3 of your project will be about root locus. So uh, basically you have already have your uh, transfer function. Okay, so from your transfer function, uh, try uh, plot root locus. Okay, so this is your part three. Try plot root locus. Um, kalau pakai um, simulink ni saya tak tahu. Tapi kalau pakai uh, coding, uh, saya tahulah. So coding, um, sebenarnya boleh cari online je. So, so uh, your task is search online how to plot root locus using uh, transfer function and MATLAB. And then uh, plot the root locus, okay? And then discuss, okay? That's your part three. So part three, uh, due date is uh, week 11. So sekarang week 9. Okay, week 11. Okay, so boleh skip yang lain-lain ni. Uh, terus pergi part 6 ni. Part 6 locus. Okay, so that's your task for part 3. And if you have a problem regarding your trans function, maybe trans function tu uh, pelik-pelik je, uh, you can ask me, okay? So for part 3, is about root locus. Okay, so that's all for today's class. If you have any question, uh, do not hesitate to ask me, okay? And that's all for today. Assalamualaikum and bye-bye. Thank you, doctor. Thank, Thank you. you.
Thank you.